And hi, welcome back to The Journey. I'm your host, Mr. Harris, and I want to get right into the show today because I have a room full of guests. And one of the questions that's commonly asked in terms of like, how are after school programs having an effect on STEM programming? And that's actually a national conversation right now. Well, I got some people in the studio today who are going to talk about the effect and what's happening here at Renaissance Youth Center in our STEM program. So don't go anywhere. Come right back to The Journey. Welcome to the Mr. Harris Welcome Show. To Welcome to the Mr. Harris Welcome Show. To the Welcome to the Mr. Harris Show. Welcome to the Mr. Harris Show. It's called the Journey. journey. Mm-hmm. And hi, we're back. Welcome back again to the Journey. Well, I'm not sitting here alone by myself anymore. I have some company in the studio with me, and I want to introduce them. Um, first, I want to introduce our staff person. Uh, give them your name and. Uh, my name is Mr. Max, and I teach astronomy. All right, who you got with you today? Michael, and I am in astronomy. Okay, Michael. I'm Ben. And Ben, and I want to welcome you all to the journey. So, when we think about after school programs, I don't know if you guys have been in after school programs, we think of milk and cookies and working around in the gym, you do arts and craft. Here, you guys have majors, right? And so. Um, you already mentioned that your major is astronomy. So tell me, first of all, one of you guys, what is astronomy? I'm gonna come back to you later, Max. Uh, Ray, you, you can. Astronomy is the study of space. Okay, study of space. And what kind of things do you guys learn in astronomy? Okay. We learn galaxies, nebulas, stars, planets, and black holes. Got you. So when you say nebula, what is a nebula? A nebula is like is a cloud that's made of stardust, which is which is the remains of a star. Got you. Now, now something I didn't know until I walked into your class is that within our solar system we have a sun, and you're gonna tell me it's not a sun, it's a star. It's a star, right? I didn't know that our sun is small in comparison to other stars. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. So how small is it really in comparison? Yeah. A speck of dust. A speck of dust in comparison to the other stars and suns? All right, cool. How many planets do we currently have in our solar system right now? We have eight planets. Eight. Can one of you name all eight? <laughs> all right. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. Uranus, okay. Now, now, how did you learn all this stuff? Should we, should we point to him? Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you a question, um, Max. First, I'm um, going to introduce you and welcome you to the show. Um, how did you learn about uh, I learned off of just learning, learning things myself. And I also came here with um, someone to teach me astronomy before I went into the class. So I learned off of him, and I've also learned off of the kids that were already in the class. Right. And basically, I've built off that knowledge and right. just made, it, made myself stronger with those things and just researched myself. Right, so big ups to Jeremy, that's what you're talking about. But here's the thing I want all the listeners to understand, right? We think that because you're going to teach astronomy, you have to have an astronomer, and that's wrong. You don't have to have anyone who knows a whole lot. You just got to have somebody who just knows two or three weeks more than Mm -hmm. the class that you're teaching. Because when you came in, you had an interest, I'm sure, right? right? But you didn't know all the stuff that you know right now. You lose me when you talk. You too. I, I, lose, I lose myself sometimes. <laughs> right? But you, you took an interest. You said, hey, I'm going to go home, I'm gonna listen to some YouTube, mm-hmm. watch some YouTube, read some books. And now it's like you're just like really Mr. Mr. Amazing, right? right? Um, so what has um, excited you about teaching these guys astronomy? Uh, what excites me the most is when I teach them something and then they ask me like questions about the subject. So if we're talking about stars, they'll start asking what are the, about the other stars? What color are the stars? Or the you know when we talk about planets, we have exoplanets. You know, there's so many different things that they love to ask questions about. And space is so big and such a mystery that it just excites me when they want to learn more about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So so another thing I want to point out here at Renaissance, we believe in what we call applicable learning or hands-on learning. Applicable learning means you apply what you've learned to your day-to-day or some um, activity that you're doing, mm-hmm. right? Performance-based learning as well, right? So. In order to do that, we need more than sheets of paper and books. Right. Um, tell us what your what does your room look like? Uh, so, for, well, first we have our planets up top. We have ours. The whole entire solar system is like mapped out up top. We have asteroids up there. We have uh, spaceships, satellites. 
Uh, we have a nebula up there that glows in multiple different colors. Uh, every planet's in order. We have the constellations on the walls, big black wall with stars. Um, that's pretty much pretty much. Now, it. did you spend millions of dollars for this stuff, um, or did you make this stuff yourself? Nope, we made it all ourselves. Say that so part again. We made it all ourselves. Say that part we, again. We made it all ourselves. That's what I want everybody to understand, right? So don't feel as though you can't offer this to our young people because you don't have the budget to buy all these things, right? You paint it, you you you, mm -hmm. you drew it out, you, you made it happen yourself. And here's the thing we've learned about doing that: when you paint it and you do it yourself, you love it more, right? Did you guys help make any parts of that room, or it was already together by the time you got there? It was all together. Yeah, you didn't make any of those planets. No. All right. Tell me that, as we before I let you guys go, tell me what you like the most about astronomy. The astronomy I like about the most how we get to learn about like different subjects of astronomy, like space. I mean, like planets, stars, and more. Mm -hmm. Do you find that just you know you know more than most of your friends? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Tell me what you like most and about astronomy. Exoplanets. Exoplanets. Exoplanet. That's a male and female planet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tic tac toe planet. No. Well, what, what, so what's an exoplanet? An exoplanet is a planet that's outside our solar system. Outside of our solar. Okay. So we got nine, right? So it's it's the. It's the other million quadrillion that are outside of us, yeah. outside of us. He said, he said we have nine planets. Oh, eight. Well, it used to be nine. Thank you for the correction, right? We no longer have um, Pluto. <laughs> Pluto. Pluto. Pluto is gone. So Pluto is now, it would be an exoplanet. Hashtag bring Pluto back. Oh, hashtag bring Pluto back. He said hashtag <laughs> Pluto bring Pluto back. back. So what, what is your, now I've learned something. So what's your favorite exoplanet? J1407b. Mm, J1407. <laughs> what is that? The Super Saturn. Super Saturn. Or Lord of the Rings. Ooh. Is that right? And how did he get his name Lord of the Oh, I get how it's Lord of the Rings, because it's Super Saturn. Right. You kind of gave that part away. Is it much bigger than Saturn? Why is it called Super Saturn? Because of its rings. Because of its rings with an S. Mm -hmm. It has more than one ring. It has more than one How many rings does it have? 37 sets. Wow. All right, I'm leaving. I'm done with these guys. All right. <laughs> so as you can see... You know, this is what we're doing with STEM. But listen, we'd have more than astronomy here. Let's give these guys a hand real quick. All right. Good. And I'll be back with more. And welcome back. So we are having a conversation talking about the effect that after school programs can have in terms of development of STEM programming. And we had our first um, class come in early. We're talking about astronomy. We now have another Another group here, and they're going to talk about zoology. All right, so can we start by introducing ourselves? Um, my name is um, Mr. Sincere. I am a co-teacher for zoology. Um, here I have... Matthew. And... Heaven. All right, look at that smile. Welcome to the show. Um, you just got started. You've only yes, been sir. working with Renaissance now for what? A couple months. A couple months? Yeah. You started in the summertime, right? Mm -hmm. So we got mm, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Seven well, that'll be seven um, right. that you've been here. Time goes by fly, so it, fast, so it seems like it's a couple of months. Right. So who can tell me what is zoology? The study of animals. The study of animals. So tell me some of the animals that you have in the room. Yeah, Matthew. Reptiles, aquatic fish, and insects. Ah. So, give me some of the fish you have in your room. Okay. We have the Paco fish. We have the the beta fish. Mm. And and also we have the red parrot. Nice. So 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 talk to me a little bit about the Paco. How big is your Paco? And it's pretty big, right? Yes. Yeah. It's like big, big as a child. Big as a child. So as a baby child. Baby so it's child. probably about like this, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, and what does it eat? It yeah. eats almonds and cashews, but also sometimes pellets. Pellets as well, right? Um, do you know if it's a male or female? Um, I think I think it's a a male because that the um the of its tail. Okay, so if you say you think it's a male, that would be your hypothesis. And your hypothesis means uh, educated that's guess. your educated guess. 
Great. Now you also have turtles yes. and yes. tortoise. Yes. Right? What's the difference of a turtle and a tortoise? Yeah, man. One lives on land, one lives on water. One lives on land, one lives on water. Tell me what's the difference of community fish and territorial fish? One of them are like doesn't like to share its food, its space, or it's like anything. It doesn't like to share anything. Just share but its one but one of them community is like when it likes to share its food, its space, and like it likes to share. Ah. Do you also have a gecko in your room? Yes. Um yes. What kind of geckos do you have? We have leopard geckos and um we have the crusted gecko. Ah, oh, do they eat the same kind of food? Um, yes. Yes, they do. Okay. Now, I know in order to keep those fish healthy, you have to do water testing, don't you? Yes. yes. And what are you testing the water for? We are testing the water for, um, if to see if it's acidic, basic, or, um, neutral. Or neutral. Ah. Now how do you learn all this stuff? My, um, my, a uh, Mr. Sincere, Miss J. Miss J. Shout out to Miss J. Oh, that's right, Miss J. So let's talk a little bit about, about you, sir. Yes. You've been here seven months. Mm -hmm. how, how do you know all this stuff? Um, like I said, shout out to Miss J. Um, <laughs> she took me under her wing when I got here. Um, she basically just helped me out. When I was younger, I had a passion for like animals, I guess, and this job just fits me. So. When I got, you know, the role of being with Jess and we paired up, we just click and she helped me out just learning more about animals. And now I can, you know, help them learn more. Nice, nice. Well. So when you were hired, were you hired as a program zoologist? No. No, no right? You just hired as a camp right. counselor, right. boom. And we yes. found, had all these different rooms. Say, hey, which room interests you? Right. And you've allowed your interests to drive you crazy to mm -hmm. learn more and more. Do you find that the kids also teach you? Yes, all the time, all the time. <laughs> Can you give me an example of a lesson they kind of taught you about something in that room? Um, so I guess it was one day I came in and like they was telling me about how, when I missed a day and they told me about something about the um the chameleon. So they were telling me about how like the chameleon was like changing its colors and they were telling me like, Oh yeah, Mr. Sincere. So we learned how like the chameleon was just changing its colors because the way we were making it feel. Ah. And I was mm -hmm. like, the way you're making it feel, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, we was just like kind of around her and um, we were making her scared. And yeah. she started turning dark. That's right, she gonna so I was like, black color. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and, <laughs> right, right, well, I have a lot of those moments. Every time I walk right. in a room, somebody's teaching me, um, teaching me something. Um, absolutely great. Uh, what did, now, you grew up in an after-school program? Mm, not really. You never went to an after-school program ever? I mean, like, my middle school days, but, like, it wasn't really, like, Renaissance. Right. It wasn't as structured as Renaissance. Oh, well, I'm was. sure it wasn't. Um, yeah, it, sure wasn't. it wasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> but wasn't but no all. disrespect to any other after-school program. Right. What was the difference? We didn't have homework help. Like, we had homework time, but it wasn't as, like, long as it is yeah. here. Yeah. And it wasn't, and you know, it's not like not to say discipline like in that type of way, but like you know what I mean. Like it wasn't, we we it wasn't as respectful. Like the kids wasn't respectful there. Like here we teaching kids respect, and we're trying to show them maturity, young. So when they get into you know outside world, yeah. they'll be more mature and they they're more level headed with themselves, and they know what to do in situations by themselves. In my after school, we didn't have people like that there. Right. It was just freedom. We did whatever we want. We went to the gym or, you know, we right. was in computers. Right. It wasn't no help. For right, me. right, right. So there's a lot, lot more structure right. here. All right, before I let you guys go, what is your favorite part about being here? My favorite part about being here is learning about everything in different rooms and how the uh, science fairs, each science fair makes me learn a lot more about the animal that's behind me and what I see. All right. Now, you went with us on a bio blitz. Yes, I did. What, tell everybody what a BioBlitz is. A BioBlitz is where it's this campus where you get to meet all these uh, respectful people and they tell you about different animals and they all know about these these type of animals and they know every type of species, but not every type of species, like species that they see regularly. 
Like, mm-hmm. where to see the campuses. Mm-hmm. And do you remember how many days and nights you were there? Yes. How many? Uh, I believe it was three days and a half. Three days and two nights. Three and nights. you slept outside yes. the whole time and no showers. No showers. Because right? we were in the woods, so he didn't bathe for... <laughs> no, me too. I was out there with him. We couldn't take the shower <laughs> anywhere. We got to get in the river, right? Remember that? What's your favorite part about being in Renaissance? My favorite part about being in Renaissance is that we get to learn um, new stuff and we like, and whenever you firstly get there, you get to meet new people Mm. and they're very nice to you and you like see very different people that you don't know. All right, all right. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. You should be very proud of yourself. All right, we'll be right back with more majors.